although the history of it is uh, rather unique in that by an act of the legislature in 1987, the state of Connecticut uh, made a policy decision to remove all tolls from our highways, largely as a result of a seven fatality accident on I-95 at a toll booth in Stratford that occurred in 1983. Some would argue that uh, we have missed revenue, if you will, by not having tolls. Um, and I think uh, I can understand why people might have that perception. But in actuality, the state of Connecticut has benefited uh, in many ways by having removed the tolls, one of which is an increased level of federal transportation funding that we've benefited from every year since the tolls were removed 23 years ago. Uh, we have amongst the highest percentage of uh, uh, federal funding for transportation revenue of any of the states in the Northeast. It, there's also a perception that uh, tractor trailer trucks who come in interstate uh, and drive through Connecticut uh, to other states, New England, don't share in any kind of uh, revenue to the state of Connecticut, which is also not an accurate perception. Uh, they are required under federal law to maintain a log, and that log monitors their hours and distances traveled within the state of Connecticut. And from that information, we get revenue by that source that goes into the Special Transportation Fund. Uh, in recent years, there have been uh, several proposals that have been brought forward and have focused on border tolls, which would be at the entrances to Connecticut on the interstate highways. What I feel, and I think many people share, is that border tolls would have a very detrimental effect not only uh, on our economy because we actually attract consumers into the state on a regular basis who find it cost effective to do purchasing here, uh, which then relates to sales tax. And one of the significant examples where that is very positive for the state of Connecticut, the Danbury Fair Mall, which is uh, right off of exit three of I-84 in Danbury, and within five minutes to the New York state border, 40% of its purchases are made by out-of-state residents, largely from New York. Now, that is the largest uh, enclosed mall in New England. Uh, their sales revenues are consistently high. Uh, the revenue that they generate for the state of Connecticut is very significant. It doesn't make sense to me that we would put up an obstacle or perhaps a disadvantage for people to continue a pattern of shopping on a regular basis at a place like the Danbury Mall, and that's just one example. We have many because we are one of the smallest states geographically, we have many residents that cross borders on a daily basis for employment. Um, I don't know that it makes good sense, especially in this economy, that we uh, add one more cost burden to our own taxpayers and residents just so they can get to and from work. Uh, and then there's some of the obvious things which have to do with safety factors and the environment and the aggravation of congestion, um, how people might get off the highways and travel through local and residential roads to avoid paying tolls, um, which could be as high as $5 in each direction uh, in order to recoup the investment that you would make to implement the tolls. Sure. Uh, important to note that there, the what I was just referring to in the border tolls, there was such a proposal earlier in this process that was brought forward by the Transportation Committee Chairman and did not make it out of committee. The one toll proposal that did, uh, and I believe it was a 12 to 23 vote, would identify uh, a specific roadway, highway, and the road would be built uh, under the concept that tolls would be established once the road was completed for that road 
only. So there is no guarantee if we were to pass this measure that we would obtain necessary authorization from the federal government to implement tolls for that purpose. Um, I guess the concept is that we wouldn't proceed with the project until we have the authorization in place. But there's recent evidence that the federal government has uh, denied uh, the request for several other states under those same circumstances. So I think the opportunity for us to get that authorization uh, is not necessarily well evidenced or well founded. Um, and, and I believe that once we start that practice, the signal that we're sending out is that the state of Connecticut um, is inviting tolls as a mechanism of a new revenue source. It also sends a signal out as we are struggling uh, in these tough economic times to create jobs, to strengthen our economy, to not only try to attract businesses and corporations to come to the state of Connecticut, but also to retain corporate uh, employers here in the state of Connecticut. It gives them one more reason not to be here. And it will be on that list of things that will have them consider going to other states. I actually have, and, and I would tell you it's not only individuals who obviously wouldn't embrace tolls. Um, it's certainly uh, business entities, it's uh, business advocacy groups uh, like the Connecticut Business and Industry Association uh, in our area, the Greater Danbury Chamber of Commerce, the Bethel Chamber of Commerce, the Brookfield Chamber of Commerce. These are all uh, business advocates that are looking for ways to improve and strengthen uh, the business climate in our area um, and create a, a more business-friendly atmosphere. Uh, and they're very strongly opposed to any form of tolls being re-implemented here in the state. Thank you.